Amen. You may be seated. Standing on the promises. That shall never fail. We must stand on the promises of God. Let us pray, most gracious and heavenly Father, as we come at this hour of the day, thanking you and praising you for your blessings, great and small, and for the promises that we must stand on. We thank you, Father, for your Son who came that we might live, and for your blessed Holy Spirit, the Comforter which is come. For you promised that you would never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. That if we would hearken diligently unto your commands, that you will make us the head and not the tail. We'll be above only and not beneath. That we will be a blessed nation. In these promises, we do stand. Father, you said it shall come to pass afterward that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh. We're standing on your promises. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you will bless us, feed us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, that we may be able to stand firmly upon your promises. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and for his sake. We thank thee both now and forevermore. Together can we all say, amen. Give an honor to God and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel, to the diggings that are assembled, to the congregation, and to our visitors tonight. We say good evening, and may God bless you. Because truly, God is good, and his mercy endureth to all generations. There's no such thing as a generation gap with God. Amen. Somebody in every generation will follow the commandments of God. Someone. So there's no such thing as a generation gap where God is concerned. So we thank God indeed for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and then respect. It is first to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God for the man and the woman of God, O life of Solomon, the show, and his companion, who God fixed up with his word one day and sent him into the world. And they preached and taught the gospel that whosoever believeth in him, that they should not perish, but that they might have everlasting life. What a promise. Amen. And we stand on that promise. And we are here tonight because of that promise. So we thank God indeed for the 10 days of fasting and praying for the songs of Zion, the testimonies, and for each and every one of you pressing, because it is a pressing way. If you're going to go this way, you're going to press. The devil ain't going to let you go at ease. Oh, no. You're going to press. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer persecutions. But do you not know? Gold ain't pure until it's been through the fire. And you will never shine until you are buffeted. Amen. Do everything you want to do. Anything that the devil does against you will only cause you to shine for Jesus. But stand on the promises. God said that I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. Stand on that promise. Amen. So truly, I thank God. 
for taking me through thus far, for leading and guiding and protecting and caring for us all throughout seen and unseen danger, up and down the highways and the byways. And God has brought us into another evening whereby we might be able to feast from the fountain. And watch this now, that never runs dry. There's no searching to his understanding. You cannot reach the end of God because there's no ending. I am the beginning and I am the end. I'm the first and I am the last. I am everlasting. Amen. So we thank God indeed for the fast and for the messages that have been coming forth. Is it worth your soul? The soul is very important, church. It is that deepest inward part of man that has its emotions and its feelings. And some even say it's got the hidden feelings. Amen. People got a lot of things that's way down deep. Amen. And the gospel will uncover these things. And what's necessary to be done is to give it up and turn it loose. Surrender, give them all up, that you might be pure and clean and separated from these hidden sins. So truly, we thank God indeed for the messages that have been coming forth. Amen. Last night, we were talking about that, the cancer of the soul. Amen that attribute of Satan that is just set up camp and he is spitting out all of his little spirits and these spirits causes one to be non-productive you can't say amen to the truth. You can't clap your hand when the songs of Zion is being sung. You just sit there like a wart on a log. No meaning, no substance, no ump. Amen. You just buy in time. Like we learned once before, that whenever the coach sees that you are non-productive on the floor, and you're supposed to be in the game, and here some girl got your mind gone in another direction, then the coach will snatch you off and say, you sit on the bench until you get ready to play. Am I right, brother? Amen. Same thing with God. Folks are nonchalant. Amen. As Dick Garnett say in the game, they can hoop and holler, but come to church, they can't open their mouths. Amen. Tonight we want to talk to you about the empty soul. Amen. The empty soul. The word T-H-E is used especially before it noun with a specifying and a particularizing effect. We're talking about what is empty tonight. Empty is not containing or holding anything. Amen. People go to church and they leave church and say, well, what did the man preach about? I don't know. But he preached? Yeah, but what did he preach about? But he preached? I can't tell you what he preached about, but he sure preached. But you come here and you leave here, you're going to know what's been preached about. The empty soul. Amen. Empty also means hungry or lacking food. Amen. Unoccupied or uninhabited. Every soul of man should have God in it. For if God is not in in it, it is empty. Amen. And it is void, watch this now, with 